All right, folks, this is how to install Stable Diffusion Web UI Forge. We're going to scroll down and look for the installation link here. Now, if you're one that wants to install it manually, you can go ahead and download Git and Python separately. But this download package here will take care of all of that for you. Just click it, save it in your downloads folder. Now, once it's downloaded, just right click extract all and save it in the directory where you want to save it. In my case, it's going to go to my D drive. And then you want to double click on this folder. And you're going to see these three icons. The one you want is the run.bat file. Double click on that and the installation is going to start. That's pretty much all you have to do at this point. Now, should you want to update Forge to its latest version, this is the icon that you want to click on. You just double click it and it's going to run automatically. The run.bat file, this is what you want to run Forge with every time you want to use it. So what I like to do is right click over it, show more options, and then send to desktop to create a shortcut. If we take a look at my desktop, there it is. I just double click that and it will launch Forge. Also, this folder called Web UI is where all your files will be from your LoRa's, your models, anything else that you need to download. Now, when you first start out, you won't have any models in your folder. If you go to a place like civitai.com, you can go ahead and download those models into this folder here. You want to look for models and under this folder, you want to look for stable diffusion and you want to place those models in here. I don't have any models in here really, just this one because I keep them on a secondary location, which I'm going to show you how to do in a second. Now, if we go back to the model folder, you'll find one called Laura. This is where you want to place all your LoRa's. Once again, mine is in a different location, but if you want to store them locally, this is where you would place them. The other folder I wanted to point out is the one for control net. Let's double click in there. Now, when you first install Forge, chances are this is going to be empty. What you might have to do is create one called models and you can put your control net models in this location. Now, if you're using another platform like Automatic 11.11, Comfy UI, Invoke AI, we can point to another directory where all your models might be. So if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, you want to look for Web UI User Bat, this one, and right click over it. You can edit it in regular Notepad, or in my case, I'm using Notepad++. It's free to download. I'll leave a link in the description below. For your checkpoint models, you want to do it like this, dash dash CKPT dash DIR, which means directory. You want to open with quotations, put your hard drive, and then the path to your checkpoints, okay? For your LoRa's, it follows the same method, dash dash LoRa dash DIR, and your folder location. Now, if you happen to have hyper networks, embeddings, that type of thing, you just have to follow the same format, save it, and you're good to go. Now, once you've adjusted your checkpoints, you want to double check, make sure they're loaded. They look good. Your LoRa tab here, you want to check and make sure your LoRa tab is there. The only other thing I wanted to show you here is in settings. Going back to control net, if we scroll down a little bit down here, we'll find an area here for control net. And under this field here, where it says extra path to scan for control net models, this is where you want to copy and paste your control net path. If you're using something like automatic 1111, as you see here, could be comfy UI, could be a separate folder, whatever the case may be, you want to paste that in here. That way you don't have to load the models again separately under the Forge control net folder. Now stay tuned for the next videos. I am going to do some beginner videos as well. However, first I'm going to cover some of these options here. What do they do? What are they for? For those of you that are more familiar with this interface, I'm going to go through most of these in separate videos to come. But until those videos come out, I'll see you when I see you.